Hello and welcome to a video tutorial about programming something called the super shape. Ah, look at that formula. In, I'm going to do this in JavaScript. We're going to use the P5JS uh, formula. This is a topic which is a continuation of a previous video that I made about the super ellipse. I'm essentially going to use the exact same code I had in my previous super ellipse video and turn it into this other more elaborate formula called the super shape. The super shape uh, is an, uh, this is Paul Bork's uh, website. Uh, I'll include a link to it in the description. This is a page documenting how to do this from 2002. And the equation is something based on Johann Gilles. Gilles, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Um, and you know, this is, these are formulas that are designed to try to simulate and create different kinds of natural forms. And eventually, if I am strong enough, if I'm courageous enough, <laughs> if, if I can manage it, I'm going to in the next video, finally look at the super shape in 3D, which allows us to start creating forms that look like this sort of stuff. But at first, we just want to see if we can make these 2D-like forms with different parameters for this particular formula. So let me come back, and here is the formula. OK, so what's the core idea here? Um, let me come back to the whiteboard here for a second. The core idea, if you've forgotten, is that I have this idea of a polar coordinate system. So I have some r and some angle. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over every possible angle from 0 all the way to 2 pi. And actually, you can generate interesting super shapes by doing this multiple times. So going like from 0 to 2 pi like six times. Um, and what I'm going to do is with this angle, I need some way of calculating r. So that, for example, uh, if, if, if one of the super shapes might look something like a flower, that r is changing based on the angle in a way like it's oscillating. Almost like you could just sort of do this with a sine wave. Like you could say, you know, r equals sine of the angle, which is actually uh, giving me uh, like a backwards headache because there's so much that wrapped up. But anyway, you get the idea. I need to calculate r from theta. And in fact, that's what this formula is doing. It's saying 1 over r equals all of this stuff and phi being the angle. Or I'm saying theta. That's, I think that's the Greek letter phi or phi or uh, I don't know. <laughs> Everything's going wrong today. And you know, I can flip this. 1 over r equals that, so r equals that. So I need to figure out a way of getting this formula in my code. It's going to be a bit awkward. I'm sure I'm going to make some mistakes. But the other thing that's really important here is that looking deeper into this formula, there are four constants. Oh, a and b, by the way. Ah, OK. So there, there are actually more than four constants. There's like six, I think. There's a, b, m. That's not six. Yeah, it is. A, B, M, N1, N2, and N3. So based on those values, you are going to get a variety of different, um, of different results. And you can see here, if I look at this page, you can see with different values of M, we have got these different results. So hopefully, I'm going to do this correctly, and we'll see the results that are, in, that, that are on this page. So let's go to the... Um, Let's go to the code. And this is actually just the code now that I picked up from the super ellipse. Um, and you can see I'm running this here. This is the super ellipse, which is just changing uh, one particular parameter to create these different kinds of ellipsoid patterns. And I am now going to go over here. I actually don't need this particular function. And I'm going <laughs> to, the thing that I'm going to leave in here, which is the most important thing, is this. So ultimately, what I need is begin shape, end shape, every single angle. And I need to get an x and a y. And I need to draw that vertex. So this I need. Uh, and then I'm, I'm not going to worry about the slider thing right now. We'll come back to that later. What I also need is I need to have a bunch of constants. So I'm going to say I have n1. I'm going to have n2. I'm going to have n3. I'm going to have m. And I'm going to have a. And I'm going to have b. Now for simplicity right now, let's make everything 1. And obviously, you know, you can declare and initialize variables all in one line in all sorts of fancy ways. But I'm just going to be very explicit about it. Those are all of my constants. So I need to go back and forth. I need two screens, really, because I really need to refer to this formula quite a bit. But I think what might make things nice, and actually, you know, Paul Bork has uh, code for doing this here. And I guess I could check it if I get confused or wrong, something wrong. But what I think would be useful to do is to create a function. And I'm going to do that up here. And I'm going to create a function called a super shape. And it gets an angle. So this function receives an angle. Maybe I should call it theta, a for angle. It doesn't matter. So it receives an angle, and it needs to return back um, uh, r, because that's what I'm trying to calculate. So at the end, I want to return r. So let's see somehow. And, and I want to say var r equals 1. So let's just say right now, let's say this is my function. 
And then what I want to do here in this code is I want to say, I want to say uh, var r equals super shape of that angle. And then I need to say x equals what? r times cosine of that angle. y equals r times sine of that angle. And if I wanted to, I could also like scale these up by some arbitrary value. And I'm going to make that a separate variable, like radius, uh, just to scale them up. And I could probably build that. I'm doing something like ridiculous right now, but uh, I'll fix this later um, because it's returning 1. So the idea here is I should just see a circle. OK, great. So this is working. The idea here is that I have a function that takes the angle and sends back a value. And then when it sends back that value, I do it for every, I do it for every angle, and I get this circle. Now, of course, I'm getting a perfect circle because no matter what the angle comes in, I'm just returning 1. And now what I need to do is I need to get that super shaped formula in here. So let's try to do that together, and hopefully we get something that looks about right. So I'm going to go back to Paul Bork's site one more time. And so there's a bunch of things I need to calculate. One is 1 divided by a times cosine of m divided by 4 times theta. Oof, am I really going to be able to remember this? Uh. <laughs> I'm going to call this. Uh, I need some, I, like, I'll call this part one. Uh, one, oh, I did something terrible. So there's a constant called A. So this I don't want, this I want, I want this to be called, I'll call this theta. So one divided by theta times cosine of m divided by four uh, times that angle. That's not theta, that's 1 divided by a <laughs> times cosine of theta, which is the angle, times m divided by 4. OK, so that's this thing in here. So then I need to take the absolute value of that. And then I need to uh, raise it to an exponent, which is n2, which is to the n tooth power. So that's part 1. Now I need to do part two, which will probably be somewhat similar. Part two is 1 divided by b times sine of the same thing to the n3 power. OK, so what did I say? 1 divided by b and sine, those are the only things that change. And then this obviously needs to be part two. Part two, this is n3. Part two, part two. OK, so now I've got that formula there in, in two different parts. By the way, this I think is a useful thing to do. You've got this big elaborate formula rather than to try to write it all out in one line of code. So divide it into parts. OK, so we got that. Now let's see. OK, now I need to add them together. So I'll say part 3 equals part 1 plus part 2. Then I need to take the square root of it. So I can probably do that just in this line of code, square root. right? And then I need to multiply it by n1. So I just need to say n1 times that. So that's that. So that oh, and this should be part 3 with no space. So this is mostly like me just like getting that formula in here. OK, I think we're in pr pretty good shape. I think I'm doing this right. Please, please, please. Now, what else? Ooh, 1 divided by r equals all of this. So if 1 divided by r equals all of this, r should equal 1 divided by all of this, right? I could just flip that. So I should be able to say, uh, and, and actually, I don't need this bar r equals. I should just be able to say return. Oh, there's a dangerous thing that could happen here. Return. 1 divided by part 3. Now, I'm a little bit afraid of a, divide by, um, of a divide by 0 problem. So I think I better put something in here, like if part 3 equals 0, then return 0. I don't know if that's correct. <laughs> we'll look in. I'm, uh, oh, and wait, this is not n times. Wasn't there something? No, that is what. Yeah, maybe this is right. OK, so I think I got this right. And maybe there's something else that I did slightly wrong. But, but let's see if this is good enough. I have a working version of this. I can always check it if this doesn't seem to work right. OK, here we go. So let's just see what happens now if I actually let this be and let this go. Oh, and by the way, I had this like radius thing uh, equal to 100. I don't, need, I don't need a separate variable. OK, so let's now run this. And I, Ooh, look at that. That's promising. So I got something that looks right, but it's a slightly different, uh, slightly different shape. So let's actually go in. Let's go to Paul Bork's page. And um, how do I? 
get over here. Let's look at, okay, let's look at an example with n1 equals n2 equals n3. Oh, if m is 0, I should get a circle. Let's at least test that. So let me make m equals 0. Ah, perfect. I got a circle. So I think I did the code correctly. So now if I go back here and I look at with all these equal to 1, but if I have m equal to 5, I should get that shape. So let me uh, change m equal to 5 and run it again. Mm, close. Do I have something wrong? That looks a little bit different. Um, that's a little distressing. Um, pause. Back now, I figured out the error. So I had a major error, actually. I completely read the formula incorrectly. This is not the square root of all of this times n1. This is symbol, this, this, the way that this is written means it's the n one root of all of that added together. In other words, if n1 is equal to 2, then it's the square root. So I really need to fix that in my code. So let me do that briefly, uh, really quickly. So instead of n1 times the square root, I want to use the power function power takes something, and if this is like to the n once power, part one plus part two to the n once power, if I say one divided by n one here, this is part one plus, this is the n one root of part one plus part two. So I can do that, and then if I do it again, we can see, aha, now I have the correct shape. But you'll notice something, look at this. There's like a weird like mistake here, and you can see it doesn't look exactly right here. So one thing I've done very not carefully, and let me fix that here, is that I just decided in my loop down here to just say, ah, let me look at every single angle. Start at 0, go to 2 pi, go up by 0 0.1. Well, that's not very thoughtful, because 2 pi isn't necessarily perfectly divisible by 0 0.1, and it's not that many points. I could say 0 0.01, and I'm going to increase the resolution of what I'm drawing much more. You can see now it looks much more like that super shape. but I probably would make sense for me to be a bit more thoughtful of it, uh, thoughtful and say something like, a, I want to have a total of 500 points, and then I want to have the increment, the angle increment, to be 2 pi divided by that total, and then I'm going to always go up by that increment. So if I just do it that way, then I can say, this is 500 points. That's what I get with 500 points. And I could say something like, oh, whoops, I only want 10 points, and if you see that, you're going to see it still looks right, but there's only actually 10 points in there, and it's, you, there's much less curvature because it's drawing big straight lines between some of those points. But this is, I think, a better way of being able to control this. You know, with 100 points, looks like this. So like, what, how many points do I really need to get kind of like a good resolution on that shape? And when I do this in 3D, we'll need some sort of mesh. <laughs> I hope I can do it in 3D. OK, so let's look at this now. Now, I have this slider down here. Let's at least do something like tie that slider to a particular value. So for example, what if I were to say, so one thing I want to do here is, one thing that's interesting is that I want my, I want actually the increment values of m to be uh, incrementing by 1. So I want to start with an m of 5, and I want to go between 0 and 10. Uh, and then what I want to do here in the draw loop is just say m equals slider dot value. So we can just sort of make sure things are, oh, oops, dot value. Make sure things are kind of working. You can see now, you can see as I move the slider, that shape is changing. And we're seeing we're getting exactly what is written or depicted on this uh, Paul Bork website. So you can see m is 4, I should get that. m is 5 is that. Now we can see, OK, what are these shapes here? What if I have n1 equals n2 equals n3 equals 0.3? Um, now I could change all of these. And obviously, I could be much smarter about not having uh, three separate variables uh, if they're all the same value. And now we can see what does this look like. You can see now I have this particular kind of shape. And you can see what it's doing as I change that value of m. So I'm going to stop here because I could continue doing this forever. I could say, oh, let's make sliders for all the different variables. Let's try all of these different possibilities. Let's see, can we get all of these different shapes? So this is what I would encourage you to do. And by the way, you don't have to tie them to sliders. Try tying those variables to like a sign function. Um, you know, I could do that really, really quickly right now. Like, for example, if I have, uh, I'm going to have a variable called like uh, oscillate oscillate equals 0, and I'm going to say m equals uh, you know, map sine of oscillate, which goes between negative 1 and 1, to some value between 0 and 10. And then I'm going to say oscillate goes up by 0.1. And I'm going to refresh this. You can see now this is happening. It's happening very quickly, but automatically. So let's 
Let's make it go up much more slowly. And you can see here what's happening is it's kind of like changing that value on the fly. And the shape is kind of like wrapping around itself, unfurling and furling. So there's a lot of possibilities here. I could add HSB and make it a rainbow. But I encourage you to explore this, play around with it, see what types of forms you can get. And uh, eventually, at some point, I will get to that next video and try to do this in 3D to get a lot more elaborate forms. OK, thanks for watching this particular video. And I look forward to uh, seeing you in another one in the future. Bye-bye.